the guys that used to come with my dad in the 60s and 70s, those guys came for the hunt. It wasn't all about the numbers and what it measured at the end of the day. You don't get any more rugged than this, Rams. Not a bit more rugged. Are we having fun yet? Guys need to get back into the hunt for the hunt itself and the experience in the mountains. I personally feel when I'm on top of the mountain, I'm a lot closer to God than I am sitting in a church. Thank you, John, and thank you, Jesus. Hi, and welcome to the Best of the West. I'm Dan Miller. You know, being able to hunt is becoming a rare privilege that not everyone can enjoy. And once you're able to get out on a hunt, all too often we're tempted to focus on the trophy we've taken or the complexity of the shot. Well, today is a little bit different. John Porter has been on our show for years now, but I'm telling you, you have never seen him like this. After a lifetime of guiding other hunters on their once in a lifetime ram hunts, he finally gets to take a moment for himself and try to fill the tag he's been waiting for for 19 years. We want to take this truly unique moment and talk about the heritage of the bighorn sheep hunting that runs deep in John's family. In fact, to kick things off, we want to show you Tim Porter's hunt from last season, a remarkable experience for the Porter clan. A little lead based pepper spray, in case Fuzzy Wuzzy Bear wants to come say hi. Don't know why it takes so much stuff to go sheep hunting, but it seems to. As all families grow up, they tend to kind of scatter to the winds and they get into their own deal. We don't get a chance to hunt together a lot, you know, like we did when we were kids. This was an opportunity for me to get back and do the family hunt. And my dad passed away in 1994 at a very young age because of skin cancer. I know some of the earliest memories of hunting the mountains with my dad, I was riding a Shetland pony at that age. I could ride my Shetland all day long and, and dad would take me along on some of those hunts. So my dad was a competitive shooter and an outfitter and all of us kids learned that. He taught us all the time from the time before we could even get a license. We were following him around chasing deer. We learned a lot. We didn't just go hunting, we went and learned what they were doing and, and how to go after them, you know. I think my dad left all of us with this extreme respect for the mountain and the animals that you hunt and in his patience that he taught us how to hunt and to do it together. It's something that I often think of when I'm sitting on a ridge somewhere glassing for sheep or something. I think he'd have been proud of all of us for, for still being here and still doing it, especially the days that we get to do it as a family. Hey, Dim, why don't you take your saw go for a walk? John and I hunting together is always a challenge because we're always pushing each other, you know. I don't know, it's always a competition, I'd say, that between the two of us. And it's got us in a few messes <laughs> over the years, spending the night out with no sleeping bags when it was 17 below. Push. It's been crazy, but we enjoy pushing each other. You win. One more out of the way, 10,000 to go. <laughs> the mountain to me, it's an adventure and you never know what's going to be around the next corner. You know, it might be grizzly bears, it might be this big open mountain valley with snow-capped peaks and whether there's elk going through it, bulls bugling. I have a saddle horse that he rides up on the ridge and he just stops and looks at the whole valley. He'll stand there for 15 minutes and look at it. It's not just a personal perspective, but even the animals get into it. They just, they soak up the view and, and it just does amazing things for the inside of you. Well, one of many things that my dad really taught me a lot about is just respecting the animal that you hunt. The bighorn sheep are almost sacred to me because it, I just get a different feeling when I'm on top of the mountain with them in their world. These bighorn sheep been running these mountains 
and avoiding predators and making a living out in this harsh, harsh country. We got up here where we wanted to get to today. Awful lot of country to look at. A lot of it's very, very difficult to get to. But in order to not spend the night out up here, since we don't have sleeping bags and everything, wind's picking up. I think maybe we'll go towards a hot dinner and a warm bed. Go again tomorrow. Oh, wow, man. Let's go. Man, the Absorca Mountains are a beautiful background to this story. Hey, we'll be back in a moment to do like Robin's horse and soak up some more of that view in just a second. All this and more right here on the Best of the West. It is a beautiful morning here in the mountains that Buffalo Bill called home. Tim Porter is out with his older brother John as they search for just the right trophy to meet Tim's particular tastes. Got some rams up here. We're looking about four miles, so it's really tough to tell, but you kind of catch a glimpse when they turn their head. You can see that horn moving. It looks like a bunch of mature rams, so we're going to have to bail off of here, get a little closer and have a look. Probably three hours ride the way we have to go just to get close to them to have a look. When you're looking for sheep on the mountain, initially when you ride up on a place, you check the stuff close to you first, at least I do. And then I start picking apart the places that are typical places for a ram to lay. As the day progresses and the light changes and it warms up and they pull back in the shade, they get harder and harder to pick out. And at that point, then you start looking for pieces. I'm gonna give you an idea here just how hard it is to see these rams could just see the horn of the one over here on the right. You can see the one bedded right in the cut in the center and one on the left here bedded, probably the easiest of them to see. When most people think about spotting an animal, they see in their mind a profile. They don't see a shape or an angle or a, just a part of a hip or a part of a horn. When you start picking it apart with your spot and scope, you know, you see a piece of a hip or an ear twitch or something like that that, that clues you in. It's tough, man. Getting through this scope a little bit. I don't know that I could recommend a guy passing that one up. The problem is none of us will get any sleep tonight because you'll be stirring and kicking and dreaming and stuff. <laughs> days, Tim. Eight or nine days horseback hunting. You did about ten days of backpacking all over the place. And we've got a boomer right up here. That is why we use shooting equipment like the Huskamaw scope, which is designed for long-range accuracy. That was a 670-yard shot on a heck of a ram. Congratulations, Tim. Hey, we still have John's hunt yet to come, so stick around for more of the best of the West, your long-range shooting authority. Hey, we're back here on the Best of the West. I'm Dan Miller, and so far, younger brother Tim has taken a ram to remember in the wilderness of Northwest Wyoming, but his trophy has landed in a really tough place to get to. Lat Durrance is with John to help out, and things aren't looking too easy for them. I'm not, even if I did that, I'm not worried about that part. I'm worried about coming back with meat. 
and the head across the getting down towards where we're at. We finally got up here to Tim's Ram. What a job. We're probably <laughs> going to end up spending the night the way it looks, but I actually uh, got a radio out called Little Sister, so maybe she'll find us another route off of here because the route we come up with was nasty. A lot of cliff climbing. Pretty rough stuff, but uh, that was a good one, Timmer. Good one, buddy. That's an awful good ram. Awesome ram, nine and a half year old ram. You know, Tim is one of these guys that he just tends to do things on his own. He spends a lot of time working extra hard just to finish something on his own to not rely on other people. And I was really proud that he came to me when he drew this sheep tag and we got together to do this. Something about these old bighorn sheep. I sure love hunting them. Oh, I was, I was wound up. You get so excited you can't even hold still, you know, I mean, it's a real experience. Chasing those, those rams have always just had something special to them that I've, I've always liked chasing them. It just kind of gets in your blood, <laughs> but you don't get any, very many opportunities to go do it yourself. Well done indeed, Tim. It really is a special hunt when you have your family along for the adventure. And now it's John's turn to fill a tag that it took him 19 years to draw. Well, we worked pretty hard getting up into this basin. Nobody's been in here this whole season. There's no tracks on the trail, hasn't been any. Giving the old ponies a good workout. This old horse here is a horse I've had since she was 20 months old. So she's about a 94 model. It was actually the first horse that I'd ever bought myself. Prior to that, I rode my dad's. Kind of an ornery old girl, but she'll do the job. Snug them up just a little bit. Get another week out of them, put the pressure on him. A lot of people don't realize this. When you go in on one of these sheep hunts for 10 days, and it's not like you just run down to Walmart and pick up what you forgot. Whatever you've got, that's, that's what you're gonna live with for the next week or 10 days. And that's where Robin really shines. All the small details, she can put it together, she can pack it on a horse. Must be 120 pounds in here. <laughs> if I'm not there, she can do it anyway. Maybe not quite that much. She's had five bighorn sheep hunters, that she's guided over 70 years old and got them all bighorn sheep. I like to explore things a little carefully myself and John's not that way. He's always about seeing something new and doing something different and covering new country and, and I've learned so much. I've covered so much ground that I'd have never tried on my own. I don't know, John's got the same sense of adventure my dad had. My dad went a lot of places just to say he went there, you know, and, and John's the same way. I mean, he gets up somewhere, up one of those drainages, and, well, I've never been up that ridge, so away we go when we go up that ridge, you know. Well, looks like maybe we kept the bears out of camp. We just got rolled back into camp here, and everything seems to be in good order. We'll turn the electric fence off, take it down, and set up shop again, go on another sheep hunt. Well, with camp set up and things ready for the hunt, this long-awaited family adventure is off and running. We'll be back in a moment to see the conclusion to John's ram hunt right here on The Best of the West. John Porter is in the Absorca mountain range with his nephew, Matthew Rick. They're doing a little spotting from camp, trying to come up with a rock-solid game plan getting down to the point that we were losing days and we weren't sure that he was going to have the opportunity to finish his own hunt. And when you've spent so much time filling other people's dreams on these sheep hunts and then to not be able to finish his own is going to be really disappointing. I was so busy, I crimped myself down to about four days was all the time that I had to hunt. We got in and found the batch of rams we were looking for. There wasn't really any question about it. It was an awesome ram. We didn't have a lot of time to set up. It was tie the horses up, get our stuff together, 
and see if we can get the ram stopped before he got into the trees and we'd never see him again. How far is the rooster? 450. Ready? Yeah. There he is. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Right in the hole. <laughs> now, that's what I'm talking about. All this time I spent guiding. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All this time I spent guiding. I've had a total of about three days to hunt for myself. I got another hunter waiting for me to hunt another area. I'm about five hours horseback in, and it's 5.30, dark at seven. Gonna be an all-nighter and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 450. Cooper rifle, Huskama optics. Next best thing to be in there. Ready for the next one. Now that's what I'm talking about. A good old broom ram. Head pulled out of there. Oh yeah. Look at that old rumor. Big old bases. Kind of tight curled. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half years old. Beautiful dark cape. Let me tell you folks, this sheep hunting, it's not all about this. It's about the country and all the other animals you see and hunting with your friends and family. It's what it's really all about. Although a dandy old ram sure puts a fine finish on it. What a dandy. Look at how heavy that old boy is. Look at that be number 97 for me and I couldn't be any happier with this he's a monster to me I love it it does not get any better than this folks you don't get this in your 40 acre woods I was so excited when he texted me the picture of the ram from the mountain and said here it is I was so excited for him Well, you know, when my dad died, I, you know, I never had the opportunity to really, to really absorb it, you know. This hunt with my brother and my sister and my nephew was, was really a lot of fun. What a hunt, huh? And although the animals were incredible, the experience to be out in the wild with family that's the real treasure of the moment. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this show. We'll have more great hunting from your long range shooting authority next time, only on the best of the West. I'm Dan Miller, see you next time. Very impressive. Another beautiful ram. That is an old ram. He's a good shot. Ooh, thank you for getting me here. Beautiful sheep. Yep. Beautiful country. For a once in a lifetime sheep hunt, John Porter is definitely the way to go. Uh, his, his horses are great, everything is safe. He's this guy knows sheep like the back of his hand, hunted them for years. For a once in a lifetime hunt, he, he will find sheep, he will have a chance. To hunt with John Porter and Morning Creek Outfitters, give them a call at 307-587-5343 or visit them online at wyominghunts.com. <laughs>